So let's dive into the history of Konoehara Academy. 1927, founded in M-Town, H-City, by millionaire Genzo Konoe. Genzo. Um, yeah, funny, because Genzo, in a right way, it could be original constructor, I think. But no, obviously, that's not what they go for this, but it reminds me of that. Construction of the school building is completed, the old building, 1928. Clock tower, 1937. 1938, Genzo Konoe passes away. Ah, oh, so he died 11 years after the school was built. 1945, air raid, firebomb dropped on the school. Both the school building and the clock tower are left unscathed. Ah, school's address changes due to the town's merger. Konoe Hara Academy Student Council is launched. Construction of the new building and the special building are completed and the old building is renovated. Uh, how much later is that? I already, 50 years? 70? Uh, 60? Clock tower stops working due to age, 1990. And old building goes out of commission, 1994. 70 years of history, 70. Yeah. There were likely some tragic incidents that occurred during those decades. Does anything here give me a hint as to the departed's identity? That firebombing seems relevant. Shibito no kehai. Shibito no kehai. The departed's presence. La 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 la. I close the Konohara Academy brochure once I've finished reading it. Then I take a sip of coffee, I brewed. It's tea, but still. Nice warm drink. <laughs> the timing! It's been three days since the end of Slipmouth Kashima's case, and there's yet there's yet to be a new notice. In the interim, I've borrowed several documents from the school in a des desperate bid to find any clues related to the departed's identity. The investigation is not going so well. I feel like I'm treading water in the middle of the ocean, and I can't see the shore. Instead, my sense of uneasiness keeps growing larger and larger. Time to get going. Mr. Konoe called me in today. I'd better head to school. Time to teach another class? Ugh. I'm feeling much better today than I was last time, so I decided to take my car. After cresting this steep slope, the school grounds finally come into view. I wonder if I have some unexchanged teeth on me. Which is a great sentence out of context. Mr. Kono is already left by the time I arrive at the faculty room. Without any direction, I decide to go to the infirmary. But just then, someone asks me to fill in for an absent teacher. Of course! Ah. 1845 to 903. What is this? Konoe Hara... Dogu? I'm still not used to standing in front of a class. However, I do my best to remain professional and struggle through it, teaching a lesson cobbled together from stray bits of my knowledge. Can I ask a question? Female student timidly raises her hands. It's not related to the lesson, though. What is it? I heard you're investigating the departed. Does the departed really exist? I don't know. I do know, but better to keep it vague for the students. My answer causes a stir among students. Obviously, I know the departed does exist, but I can't just share this fact with them. In this end, that's the response I decided to leave them with. Also, their school benches look really uncomfortable. The chime signaling the end of class sounds. Saying my goodbyes, I leave the classroom and walk towards the infirmary. Infirmary. Well, Daimon might still be in the hospital, right? School's over. Time to start my investigation. None of the mark bearers will be here today since I didn't tell anyone I was coming. Had I just made this decision earlier, they'd all still be alive. I'm always one step behind. Mr. Konoe should be back by now. I better go to the faculty room. Uh, let's see if there's anything to trade. Oh, I only have one tooth. Never mind. Um, let's save again. Over an old one. And 
go to the faculty room. Hello, Gabu. Sorry for making you wait. Has there been a new notice? No, I didn't call you because of that. I just wanted you to directly report your results in the Slipmouth Kashima case to me. Go ahead. I gave him a general report about Kashima case. It's also been decided that the broken glass and dirty floor in the art room will be left as it is for the time being. I can't blame them considering the current state of the old building. It just keeps getting worse, huh? Diamond's been attacked and the departed's identity still eludes us. Are there any clues that could help unravel this mystery? I've been digging through some of the school's documents, but I couldn't find anything linked to the departed. Mind lending me uh, other documents of interest, if you have them? I'm especially interested in the older ones. I've barely seen any, which is odd for a school that's got 70 years of history. Oh, about that. I assume you've learned that our school was firebombed in an air raid during the war, right? Aside from the old building and the clock tower, everything was burned down. That included the building that stored the school documents. How convenient. Even without the physical documents, you can always ask people who might recall the history you're interested in. Do you know anyone offhand who might remember? Let's see. If the previous headmaster was still in good health, he they'd be a prime con candidate. He was curious about Konoehara Academy's past and did some digging on his own. Where is he now? He died of a heart attack last month. How convenient. That's why he's the previous headmaster and I am the current one. Ah, okay. Say, Gabu, I want you to be completely honest with me. Are you confident you can solve this case? I am. I like that attitude. Just bear this in mind. There are only so many strings I can pull if people continue to disappear. I'll be held responsible for the fallout and you'll be removed from the case. To put it bluntly, our investigation will be stopped. I'll remember that. Wakarimashita. That's all I wanted to say. Sorry, Dakides. Oops, there was actually one more thing. This morning, Doryo, the student council president, asked me if you'd be coming to school today or not. Why don't you go see her? Doryo has something to say to us? What is it? Both Doryo and Michiho are in the student council room when I arrive. Hello, Mr. Gabu. <laughs> Thank you for the other day. Looks like Michiho is fully recovered. She doesn't seem sick or dispirited. Mr. Konoha said you're looking for me. Yes, there is something I'd like to discuss with you, though I don't feel like saying it myself. Michiho, can you help? You're such a scaredy cat, Hime. All right, take a look at this photo first. A picture is worth a thousand words. What is it? Ghost picture? <gasps> School pool, let's go! Michiho shows me a photo of the pool at night. I have to say, the empty water at night is pretty eerie. What is it though? Half a face? A mask? There's something pale floating above the water's surface. The photo is too blurry for me to make out what it is, but it looks like the puffy, swollen face of a human. Damn. I was the one who took this photo. The swimming club came to us to share their concerns about the pool ghost. I snuck into the school a while ago and took this picture. That's literally trespassing. Oh, come on. Don't be so uptight. I did it to try and keep the student body calm. I still can't believe I managed to get this snap, though. My supernatural sense is truly something else. Michiho grins from ear to ear. Seems like she hasn't learned anything after what happened to her during Kashima's case. Are you telling me to investigate this spirit? Wait, we didn't get a notice at all, though. Exactly. I've heard there have been a lot of strange incidents in the swimming club recently. If a spirit is behind those incidents, we have to do something about it before it gets worse. Do you mind investigating it for us? Sure. Thank you. Now tell me more about this spirit. Where should we start? The identity. Who is it? Who do you think it is? Well, we still have no idea who the spirit is, some say it's a girl. During club activities, some of the swimming club members said they heard a weird female voice. Some also claimed that they saw a severed head at night, like the one in the photo. When the rumor start? I believe it started after the fuss around Takai died down. Takai? What fuss? Care to elaborate? Oh, you haven't heard? Kyoko Takai was the first not noticed victim. 
Well, she's said to be missing, the rumors say she was killed by Hanako. Is she talking about Ribbon? Now that I think about it, I never actually learned who Ribbon was. Horikoshi told me about Ribbon. She used to be in the brass band club with Izumi, and the two of them bullied Hanako together. Well, yeah, I can't deny that. She was on bad terms with Akai ever since they were first years. Did something happen between them? Oh, it was just Akai's personality. She was always an attention seeker. She'd form a clique and have them fawn over her. She really loved that. Akai was invited to join her circle one time, but she refused. Is that what turned their relationship sour? This is just a hunch, but Izumi's bullying of Hanako might have escalated because he had Takei by his side. Or Takai. They had a shared bond of hatred. Takai would be double I, I think. Takai was bo known for her flashy red ribbon. Everyone knew she wore it all the time, and she didn't care because it was given by her boyfriend, so I or so I'd heard. She really treasured the thing. When you touched her ribbon from behind for fun, she'd get really angry. Then her boyfriend... That's enough, Michiho. You're flying off a tangent now. Takai doesn't have anything to do with the pool case. What kind of incidents have been happening? When they're swimming, all of a sudden, they feel like they're being suffocated and almost drown. That kind of thing has supposedly happened more than 10 times. Too much of a coincidence, don't you think? Bet the spirit was trying to suffocate them with their curse. So what kind of urban legend is that in a school pool? That's all we know. Please take care of the rest for us, Mr. Gubbin. I'll try and investigate at night. Right, I forgot. Wait there. Michiho writes something at her desk. Take this. This is the dorm's number and my phone number. Call me if anything happens. Or if you're feeling lonely. Uh, no, 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 no. Underage. Uh, did, 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 did. No, thank you. <laughs> Jeez, Michiho, don't be a weirdo. <laughs> Can't help teasing him, you know? He's way too serious. Yeah, yeah, laugh it off. I quickly leave the student council room, putting distance between myself and their cheerfulness. Pull rumors! While awaiting the next notice, the student council asked me to investigate a spirit haunting the pool. Several students reported having odd incidents and nearly drowning, leading some to assume a spirit was involved. Before the incidents, a student, Takai, went missing. I also heard a voice at the pool. Let's check out this pool. Where is it? How do we get there? Is there an option I'm not seeing? No. We can go to the library. I spot a familiar looking boy while glancing over the spacious library. Is it Edgelord? Once he noticed my presence, he immediately approaches me with a smug smile on his face. Edgelord! Well, well, look who we have here. If it isn't Mr. Gabu. Big congratulations to you for surviving the oh so terrifying Slipmouth Kashima. I expected nothing less from the renowned spirit doctor. I was just lucky. I think so too, actually. You are blessed by the goddess of torture. Fortune. <laughs> that was an interesting slip. <laughs> Unfortunately for Mr. Diamond, he couldn't escape his cruel fate. I heard he's hospitalized at K Hospital. You sure know a lot about my situation, don't you, Abe? Don't you think it's time you tell me what sort of tricks you have up your sleeves? Oh goodness me, to think you would be interested in my secrets. I'm attracted to you, spirit doctor, and you're drawn to my mystery. We're basically meant to be! I don't dislike the sound of that. Hey, don't dodge my question. How did you... What a silly question. I don't see any need to answer that. Don't you know, what makes a mystery fascinating and captivating is the fact that it remains a mystery. Let's keep our relationship this way. I'm in no mood to alter it. What if he's... Oh no. The last name wouldn't fit. I was like, what if he's Konoe's son or relative? But probably not. Now if you'll excuse me. With a chuckle, Abe leaves the library. Got no idea what to make of that kid. I doubt we'll ever understand each other. I feel like I'm talking to an alien. Is this what they call a generation gap? <laughs> I step out of the library after that conversation, feeling rather frustrated. Huh. 
The school will be closing shortly. All students, please promptly vacate the school grounds for today. I guess that's enough for my evening investigation. I return to the infirmary to prepare for the night. Let's do it. Maybe someone showed up. Might as well wait until the sun sets. Since I'm dealing with the spirit here, they should appear at night. Sure thing. Despite having no appetite, I forced down some cup noodles. Ooh, nice. I bought my way here to replenish my energy. I top it off with a cup of instant coffee with extra sugar. As you do. Doesn't compare to the stuff I brew myself. Coffee is still coffee, though. Does it even taste any different with the amount of sugar you put in your coffee? I would, just, I would feel it all tastes the same. It's a hot black drink, chock full of caffeine, and chlorogenic acid. Telling myself that, I gulp it down. The night is getting late. Time to head out. Phone? I got a call. Who is it from? Hello? Moshi moshi. Toryo! Good evening, Mr. Gabu. It's me, Himeko, Himeko Doryo from the Student Council. Why do you need to call me this late at night? There's something I wanted to tell you. Remember how earlier I said Takai had nothing to do with the pool case? Actually, it's the opposite. Did you find out something? I asked one of Takai's friend at, friends at the dorm. Turns out Takai used to be in the swimming club. Hang on, wasn't she in the brass band club? Some kids are in multiple. She quit the club after injuring herself during practice. After that, she joined the brass band club. But apparently, she still often came to watch the swim club practice. I heard she asked one of her friends in the club to let her swim from time to time. Because of that, the swimming club members kept away from her. So she just did her own thing. There's more, though I don't know if it's related to the case or not. Right before she died, she apparently lost her ribbon in the pool. Oh, didn't she love that ribbon a lot? Sounds like that would have been rough on her. Yes, I heard she was flipping out! <laughs> she searched all around the pool, the locker room, and the members' bags, but never found it. She was even saying she would drain the entire pool if she had to. They were having a hard time stopping her. Did she find it in the end? Nope. And after that, the notice appeared. Doryo stopped talking. I guess that's all there is to the story. Thanks, it'll help my investigation. I should be apologizing for troubling you. Please call Michiho if anything happens. She'll come flying. Anyway, have a good evening. I feel like she'll show up regardless. I'm still not sure whether Kyoko Takai is connected to the pool, pool case. Maybe I'll get a better understanding once I go there. Bum, bum, bum. Takai was in the swimming club before she moved to the brass band due to an injury. Rumor has it she was searching for the ribbon she lost before going missing. Ribbon, the first target, was Takai. If she's also the pool spirit, that ribbon might be the key to solving this. So, ooh, pool, there it is! Heck yeah! I leave the special building and head to the pool. Oh, I'm excited! After a bit of walking, I arrive at my destination. The entrance is blocked by a low palisade. Obviously, given the school hours are over, it's locked. I forgot to borrow the key. Ah, no choice but to bulldoze my way through. Really? Couldn't you just get the key in the teacher lounge? Putting my feet on the palisade, I managed to shuffle myself over in one try. Oh, a little like fence thing. Wow, this looks exact. It reminds me of the I am on observation duty pool level. <laughs> this is the pool in question. I'm not sure if a spirit would appear tonight, but let's take a look around. Yosh. Yosh. The bucket and floor brush have been left out. Someone forget to put them away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Benches by the pool with dead insects scattered on top. Right? Mm -hmm. I see nothing on the surface of the water. Certainly not a severed head. The water is cloudy and clumps of algae float atop it. I'm guessing no one's using the pool these days due to the incidents. Mm -hmm. There are some benches by the pool. Judging by all the mold growing on them, these benches must be pretty uncared for. Hmm. Each lane has a diving board. Oh, really? Oh, like the cube thing? Not the board on it. No plank. I find a small object on one of the boards. Ah, nice. Oh. 
No. What was that voice? Don't get too close to the water. You might drown. Whoa! Massive. Who's there? Flashlight not work. Oh, come on. Please work. Hmm, what is she tangled in? Hoses again? I aim my flashlight towards the source of the voice. There, I spot a bloated ghost that looks like a drowned corpse. What is that around her? It's such an awful sight to behold that I can hardly keep myself from looking away. Oh, it's her skirt. It's her school uniform. Now that I take a closer look at her, she's wearing a Konoehara Academy uniform. Judging by the hoses wrapped around her body, she looks like a victim of Hanako. So she became her own ghost? She'll be worried about all the other victims coming back? Is this spirit of Kyoko Takai the missing person named in the first notice? Save me! I have no ribbon for you. I start to get strange chills all over my body. Shit, I won't be able to endure this for long. Takai keeps saying save me over and over again. It's like she's begging for forgiveness. Hanako is no longer here though. She can't forgive her nor save her. How do I save her now? The only thing I can use at the moment are the bucket and the deck brush by the poolside. Oh no. What are we gonna do? What would this do? Scoop up air, scoop up water. Scoop up air? Scoop up floating rubbish. Scoop up rubbish in the water. This isn't that the same thing. Maybe the ribbon is in the rubbish. I don't know. I try scooping up the trash floating within the water with a deck brush. And I failed. 82% and I failed. I haven't really cleaned a pool like this before, so I end up dropping the brush. I hurry to pick it up. It didn't say that was a bad choice, though. So I gotta try again. Yes. Let's do it. There might be anything in there that we can use. Clumps of algae. Hmm. Okay. Not the way right way. Need to try something else. Okay. I wish we could use the brush to like try and untangle the hoses or something. I just got I'm just gonna try them one by one really anything in the trash a single leaf oh there's nothing in there you called it trash and you got one leaf that's not trash so do we scoop up air or water I'll do air first because it's 92%. A ghost is like, save me! And you just start miming like you're bucketing water. <laughs> okay. Oh, if she... Well, wait, no, this has to be the right... We have to just... So we have to not fail at this. 88%. Oh, okay. So what does that do? She stares at the pool, murmuring something in a relieved voice. I know this was just a dumb hunch, but maybe I stumbled on the right answer. I didn't stumble on it. It was my last option. There are more... I guess I need to do more. Oh, dead. <laughs> so this is it.
time to drown. I have run out of spirit. No. How how are you even supposed to know what to do? It's not like I'm missing environmental hints or anything. I guess maybe because she lost her ribbon and she was saying how she was ready to empty the pool to find it. Okay, bucket. Scoop up. Water. Yes. Yatemiruka. Let's do this. Please be a success. Nice. There. More. Do it again. Scoop up water, scoop up deeper water. It's the same thing in the end. Deeper. Yes. Don't fall in though. Oh, thank god. The bucket's so deep in the water that it's quite full. I slowly lift it. I'm guessing she wants me to get the bucket deeper into the water when she says more. How's that? I scoop deep like you want it. Takai's spirit stares at the water inside the bucket. <gasps> it was in there! I follow her gaze and see something floating inside. What's this? A flashy red ribbon. I think I remember something about Takai wearing that. Is this what you've been searching for all this time? I heard Takai disappeared while she was looking for her ribbon. She was probably killed by Hanako before she found it. Uh. <laughs> oh. She just wanted her ribbon. Takai spirit laughs happily as she disappears into the darkness. Damn. That was a quick one. The regret that Takai's lost soul bore has been dispelled. She shouldn't appear here again. Let's go back. I can't believe that was that. The spirit haunting the pool was Takai, Hanako's first victim. Getting her ribbon back allowed her to rest in peace. Takai bullied Hanako along with Izumi, which is why she was a target. The departed didn't show up during this investigation, so this might be unrelated to them. Hmm. Hmm. She's in the window! She watching! This concludes the requested investigation. Yet the night is still young. What should I do next? Look! Creepy! I feel a set of eyes on me! Look out the window! Yes! <laughs> so cool! Was that the departed? Why were they here though? There's an unfamiliar item on the desk. What is it? Ah! A notice! <gasps> Don't tell me the notice is for me. Dear student council, I will kill you tonight. I'm watching hiding in the school. Dorio? Why were they here though? This is- there's a- oh wait, oh this- oh, right back. Student council? Michiho and Dorio? Shit, what to do? First things first, I need to check whether they're safe or not. Better call them now. I take out the note Michiho gave me. And then I punch in the number written on the paper. <laughs> punch it. Michiho isn't answering. Let's call the dorm and check if they're in their rooms. <laughs> the languid voice of a middle-aged woman is transmitted into the receiver that is pressed against my ear. She must be the manager. My apologies for calling this late at night. My name is Gabu. I'm one of the teachers at Konoe Hara Academy. Have Dorio and Kinukawa returned home? Hold on. Mr. Gabu, right? You're the teacher who's been hitting on those two. What? 
playing dumb, I see. I've heard it all from the kids here, you know. They say there's a four-eyed middle-aged teacher who's been hanging around with Doryo and Kinukawa. Hang on a second. This is... My goodness, how immoral. There have been more and more indecent teachers trying to put their hands on these innocent students. Just admit it already. That's what your intentions are, aren't they? This is getting me nowhere fast. She's prejudiced against me. Why is this happening now of all times? What can I do to make her listen to me? Bring up Mr. Konoe. I'm investigating a case at the request of Mr. Konoe. If you refuse to cooperate, that is your choice, but I'm letting you know that he'll be hearing about it. Are you all right with that? Huh? Hold on a second. You're joking, right? No, I'm not. Why do you have the gall to talk to me like that? Why don't you try calling him and see whether or not he thinks it's a joke? What are you going to do? Your call. Ugh. Door manager remains silent. Merely mentioning the name Konoe seems to be pretty efficient effective tactic within the school. My apologies. You see, the female dormitory has been getting a lot of weird calls lately. I didn't mean to offend you at all. I'm just talk taking precautions for the girl's sake. Jeez, now she's finally willing to listen. So where are they? To tell you the truth, both of them haven't returned and it's already past curfew. Excuse me? I always warn the kids that they need to get back by curfew, but they... The door manager offers up a bunch of half-assed excuses. She obviously just doesn't want to be held accountable. They actually left after coming back. I let them go since it was before curfew. I didn't do anything wrong. Did you ask where they were going? No, I respected their privacy. But I distinctly remember that Kinukawa was t talking on the phone before she left. Judging by their conversation, I assumed she was invited out by someone. I'll try looking for them. Could be the departed mimicking me. Because they called out Daimon as well to get them separated one time. Ignoring what the dorm manager attempts to say after that, I immediately hang up. This is bad. Stifling my mounting anxiety, I quickly try to organize my thoughts. They got a phone call and left the dorm. Luring the target out with phone call is a trick the department, the departed has used over and over again. Knowing that, it's probably a sign that they've been lured back onto the school grounds. I need to find them, and quickly. Save first, yes. Final stage. Okay, if you were to depart it, where would you lure them to? The old building? Two of them have to be at the school somewhere. Where to look first? Come. Place connect past future. The connection between the old and new building? That whisper. It's the same voice that told me to pretend to be Mr. Hirose during Slipmouth Kashima's case. Come to the place that connects the past and the future. The voice is trying to guide me somewhere. I think it's the bridge between... The bridge connecting the old and the new building. Hello? The flashlight. Oh, it went out? Dang it. You. Oh, so we're hearing her? A female doll is standing in the darkness. You're the one who called me, right? I forced the words out of my tensed mouth. So, a place that connects the past and the future. It must be this corridor. What the hell are you? Just trying to speak? The doll only responds with a hollow voice. We simply stand facing each other, both of us motionless as time passes. Meanwhile, Doryo and Mitsuho are... I feel uneasy thinking about it. Why did you call me? Pla... Plabi... Plabi! Place bell rings. My... Place a bell, the clock tower? The doll in the red dress disappears, blending into the darkness. What did she want to tell me? Place where the bell rings, my... What's in there? Can we go to the... Ooh! Clock tower front! Ooh, new location. 
Oh, cool. Anything else here? No. The place where the bell rings, eh? There's only one possibility. Oh, that's so cool. The clock tower. Landmark of Kono Ihara Academy that was built to commemorate the school's 10th anniversary. Having fortunately escaped the fiery ravages of war, it became the symbol of the school along with the old building. The clock stopped working seven years ago, so there's no way the bell can ring. But I've often heard the bell since coming here, especially on occasions when the departed's presence is strong. Maybe it's a spirit bell. Maybe you can only hear it if your spirit power is good enough. Huh! That scream just now! Was it Dorio? She's nearby! Probably inside the clock tower. Go, go, go! It's open. The door of the grand clock tower is slightly ajar. Almost as if it's beckoning me to enter. Come on in! The moment I put my hand on the rusty doorknob, the double doors fling wide open. What exactly am I seeing here? Oh, jeez. Nudie, underaged. Both Dorio and Micho are lying on the floor in their underwear. What the hell happened here? Do you think Micho will still like bugs after this? You guys okay? Are they being held down by something hash looking? Dorio replies weakly. She can't think straight. Ugh. God. Oof. Next scene, please. Mr. Gabu. Michiho groans and calls my name. Can you stand? Don't think so. Can't move. Legs and arms. Why are you guys naked? What happened? A huge blob is wriggling around them, restraining their limbs. It looks like a mass of slime mold. I'm gonna rip it off. Wait! Don't provoke the bugs. They'll bite. Hey, there's Mukade there. Those are really, uh, poisonous? Venomous? I forget which one. A swarm of insects are crawling on their skin. Some are venomous, including the centipedes. Venomous. This is the Departus doing. Then these are- if this is the Departus doing, then these are likely no ordinary insects. There are bound to be massive consequences if I mess this up. These girls could end up like Daimon. You still have that bucket of water? I better be extremely careful and take things step by step. What should I do first? Uh, I don't know. Who's in more trouble? It probably doesn't matter, right? First I remove the slime mold that's binding her limbs. And then I carefully brush the bugs from her body. Can you walk? Barely. I help Michio get on her feet and take her out the clock tower. You just leave, Dorio? Thank you. We should be safe here. I'll go help Dorio now. Wait here. I was hoping Michio was like, because she's less timid, so she could help me with Dorio, but she didn't. I return to the clock tower and perform the same tasks in the same exact order to help Dorio. I scoop up their uniforms from the floor and run outside with her. So why'd you take those off? What were you doing? I close the doors behind me and leave a huge sigh of relief. It all went well. While the two are getting dressed, I look up at the clock tower. Is it just a coincidence that they were put here? I don't think so. There must be a reason. A calculated one at that. Mr. Gabu, we're done changing. I have to ask them what happened. Before that, let's go back to the infirmary. Do, 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 do. I make them some instant coffee. You shouldn't give coffee to people under 18. Both of them sip their drinks in silence. Caffeine can mess with your uh, growth. Their faces have regained some color. Looks like they've calmed down a bit. They should be able to talk now. I only say that because my mom was so strict. She was like, no coffee under 18. same way she was like don't you dare leave a candle unattended <laughs> mr gabu i'm fine now feel free to ask us anything you need to know that goes for me too despite their trembling voices they're trying to be strong 
Honestly, I'd rather not make these kids recall such painful events, but I don't have any choice. Time to figure out what happened in the clock tower. Uh, why'd they come back to school? The door manager told me you were invited out by someone. Who called you? It was you. Me? You asked us to help you because you were trapped in the clock tower. So Hime and I went out there. I think that was probably the departed pretending to be me in order to lure you out. Are you serious? Damn, they're a tricky enemy. What happened? The door was open when we arrived at the clock tower. The moment we stepped inside, a swarm of insects attacked us. They were crawling under our uniforms, so we took them off and tried to get the insects off. I started panicking and everything went blank after that. If they were just normal insects, I wouldn't have been so scared, but I saw some venomous centipedes among them. And they're real scary. I fucking panic when I see those. My limbs refused to move when I tried to escape. And then you came just when we were at the end of our ropes. You really saved our lives. I tell them that I've managed to resolve the situation with the spirit in the pool. Thank you, Mr. Gabu. To think that spirit was really Takai. So she was murdered by Hanako and then became a spirit herself. Kind of scary to think about a spirit giving birth to another spirit. Takai isn't the only victim that turned into a spirit. Shinji, who was killed by Kashima, was haunting the gymnasium. Oh, true! I have to wonder if this entire series of awful events was set in motion by The Departed. I mean, yeah, it would make sense that The, Par the Departed wants more and more spirits to be born, so that then, if they become pretty, then they can be eaten. More consumption. Was The Departed the one who sent those insects to attack us? Most likely. I saw a notice that they were trying to kill you two, student council. Why us? I might have an idea why. Tell us. So, I've noticed that the Departed's targets fall into two categories. People directly targeted by the Departed like you were, and those who are targeted by other spirits. Everyone who's been directly targeted by the Departed have all been people I'm close with. Then that means we were targeted because we're close with you? I think so. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, Dorio. Sorry, Michiho. I thought that it was just because they were digging too deep into the case. You wouldn't have had this horrific experience if I hadn't asked you for help. I'm a curse. I shouldn't have gotten involved in this case. Then Daimon wouldn't have to go through such terrible things. My chest tightens as feelings of regret well up inside. I hope Daimon is okay. But we were saved because of you. Dorio. You still saved our lives. That's not something that just anyone would have been able to do. You did it because you have the skills. Yep, yep. <laughs> the other adults don't believe in the departed. You're the only one I can rely on to protect us. So please don't apologize for caring about us. We're really grateful to you. Michiho. Thank you. I mean, yeah. I guess we haven't been saving a lot of the victims. Even after experiencing many terrible things, they never lose their smiles. They never turn away from the terror lurking in the darkness. Instead, they're trying to fight against it. This music. It might be copyright claims, we'll see. I don't know if it's because they're brave or have a strong sense of justice. One thing's for sure, though. What those two are doing is not something that just anyone would be capable of. I, that makes me more distrustful of them. I feel like they're the departed. Witnessing their strength and resolve has given me encouragement. The two of them shine brightly, like a beacon in the darkness. God, okay. Mr. Gabu, there's something I'm curious about. Is the departed really hiding in our school? Yes, Izumi and I said they're pretending to be a human. Do you know who? No, unfortunately. They're one cautious foe, disguising themselves and leaving no clues at all. It could still be Mr. Konoe. Maybe he killed his dad. The heart attack. Would you like to try deducing the Departed's true identity with us? Oh, nice idea. Let's give it a shot. Three heads are better than two. Yeah, sure. Let's try. Their suggestion piques my interest. Who knows? Maybe they actually can feel the Departed's presence. Or maybe since they're at school all the time. So, the Departed is targeting those who are close to you, right? 
So would they know your circle of friends and who you're close to? Since they're a spirit, they might have used their supernatural powers to figure it out. Or they might have discovered it when pretending to be a human at the school. Why don't you try exploring that option? What if the previous headmaster never had a son? Maybe we just assume that Konoe is the current headmaster and he just inherited it. But what if he never existed? Why don't you try exploring that option? If we assume they're just using powers, that won't leave us any path to, to deduce anything. There's only a handful of people who know about Ai and Sho at this school. <laughs> First up is my client and headmaster, Mr. Konoe. Since I report everything related to the case to him, he would have learned a thing or two about me during the process. Sakamoto? Next, we have the curriculum coordinator, Sakamoto. Serious and cantankerous individual. She might have heard things about me from Mr. Konoe and her colleagues. Edgelord, the male student, Haruaki Abe. For some reason, he knows a lot about me and my connections. He called me Spirit Doctor, so he may know about the Mark Bearers too. And then we have Dorio and Michiho. Both of them have been working with me, so they know I and Sho as well. That's true. I would still say it's Konoe or Michiho. Is the departed among them? If so, who is it? I would think Konoe. If that's true, it means this whole investigation is part of the Departed's plan. Like bringing me to the school, making me a teacher. Both the notices and the students' disappearance, uh, disappearances were all traps to lure you out. Whoa, so he's like a mastermind pulling the strings behind the scenes? I've been operating under the impression that the Departed was female since they refer to themselves as a bride. So why would they have assumed the form of a man when they could have just as easily taken a female form? That's true. This isn't as easy as I thought. I just don't have enough clues to deduce the true identity yet. I can only press on with the investigation, all the while wondering who are my allies, allies and who are my enemies. A long time has passed, so that really didn't get us anywhere. I can't just keep these girls out when they've already broken their curfew. We better leave as soon as we're ready. Okay. After closing up the special building, we leave the school. Back to the dorm? Um, Mr. Gabu, would you mind sharing more details about this case with us? Maybe we can help you come up with something. Well, you have a point, but... You don't want us to get involved? It's too late for that. We've already been targeted. You solving this case is the only way we're going to get our normal lives back. That's why both of us want to help you out. Well, for starters, you guys shouldn't be at the school anymore at night, even if someone calls you here. Please let us help. Fine, alright. All the deaths, grotesque occult phenomena, the fear of being targeted by the departed. My heart is overburdened with all the stress. I want to let it all out. It could still be the both of them. I also feel like with the bugs and them being trapped like that, they could have easily done that to themselves. And they weren't in real danger. There wasn't like a spirit trying to kill them. Where the other ones, it's like some school spirit is coming for them. And we would have a lead up and like Hanako or Kashima. And this time it's like there wasn't anyone there who was targeting them. So actually that makes them more suspicious than before. It's like they kind of like put themselves in fake danger just to make us overlook them. So, once those two press me, I give in easily, opening up like an unlocked diary, spilling the details of the instance up to this point. How Horikoshi and Manabe were killed by spirits, Daimon's hospitalization, as well as the female doll and the numerous visions she's shown me, something I didn't even tell the mark bearers. That's true. I guess that's just about everything. Both of them stare at me, stunned. They must find it hard to believe. Honestly, it'd be more of a shock if they believed it all. Um, Mr. Gabu, 
That doll in red dress. We know her. <gasps> you do? We saw her before at the clock tower. On the day we received the curse. I'm not following you. What curse? What a turn of events. I have to ask for details. The doll. It was two months ago during summer break. We went to the clock tower for the school's 70th anniversary project. Oh yeah, weren't you planning to get the to clock tower moving again? Yes. We wanted to inspect the inside of the tower before moving on. Oh, did they release it? By opening the clock tower up? That was when we saw a female doll in a red dress placed on the altar. Did the doll move? No, she was just sitting there. It immediately gave us both the chills, so we decided to get it out of the tower. But it was too late. We were already cursed. What is the curse? Is it okay if I tell him? Sure, go ahead. Only because I'm sure you'll believe us. Alright. Michiho looks serious, which isn't a sight of her I've seen often. You can see them, can't you? My white hair and the mark on Hime's face. Yeah, they really stand out. To tell you the truth, other people can't see them. What? Aside from us, the only one who can see them is you. That's impossible, but how? Now that I think about it, there is definitely something off. Doryo's never even tried to hide her mark from others, and none of the mark bearers have ever com commented on her white hair. It all makes sense now, it's because I'm the only one who can see them. We've been this way ever since we met that doll. This must be the doll's curse. Why haven't they mentioned it? We actually told the door manager about it before, but she didn't believe us. She thought we were just being weird kids. It was really hard on us. After that, we decided not to speak about it to anyone else. Doryo cast her eyes downward. Seems like this really has taken a toll on her, toll on her and Michiho. After that, we met you. I thought I noticed you staring at my mark. I was wondering whether you would see it. You could see it back then. Remember when you complimented my hair before? That convinced me you were the only one who could see these things. I was really happy about that. Michiho said we should talk about it with you, but I was afraid. I was scared you'd look at us weird. However, tonight, I finally got the courage. Why am I the only one who can see these things, though? I'm not too sure about why that is. Aren't there some spiritual occurrences that are only visible to you? Maybe our curse is like that. So this is another effect of my gifted supernatural sense. The woes of being cursed. I recall the mark that was carved on my body four months ago. It was a death curse. Undoubtedly, their curse also has the power to bring misfortune upon them. Have you experienced anything strange ever since you got the curse? Like a health condition? Hearing? Seeing things? Nothing at the moment. I'm not sleep deprived and I still have a normal appetite. How about you, Hime? I'm fine. I knew it. This curse is bad news, right? I mean, it's called a curse for a reason. Don't scare me like that. I feel like I've probably gotten all the information I need from, from them at the moment. I've been thinking about this for a while, but do you think the departed's true identity is the doll? Uh, it could be... But I don't think so, because the doll has been very different from the curse and helping us out. She put a curse on us, though. Isn't she, like, bad news? I'm sure she's the departed. The evil spirits that were sealed in the clock tower have come out, and I'm sure that was our fault. But she looks different. If the departed can transform into a human, they can probably turn into other things, too. Even this curse of ours is the, is the departed's doing. That means it should be lifted once they're gone. Michiho gives an abnormally loud shout. It seems to really she seems to really believe the female doll is the departed. She w she was already investigating spirits and the departed. I keep struck keep tripping over the departed when we first met. I understand why she was doing that now. She wasn't my rival. She was trying to find a way to lift her curse. If what Michiho said is true, the departed's case is, isn't just something that happened randomly. They're incidents that both of us caused. Doryo. We have to put an end to this case. Please let us help you out. They're definitely in deeper than I thought. I learned new information. The evil darkness surrounding Konohihara Academy continues to deepen. 
I wonder when that darkness will finally be cleared away and replaced by sunshine. Oh, is this a dorm? When we arrive at the dorm, the dorm manager is waiting for us. Can we see her, what she looks like? Given the fact that they broke curfew and returned this late at night, it's no wonder she's beside herself with rage. But I've already learned the trick to dealing with her from our earlier call. She's only concerned about who is going to be held responsible. Once I promise her that I won't tell the school about the curfew violation, she takes it down several notches. I say goodbye and leave the dorm. Time to head back to Kujo Mansion. Nice. La 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 la. Ah, more coffee? <laughs> I would make a decaf if I hadn't had two, cup two cups of coffee already. There, I start compiling all the reports I need to submit to Mr. Konoe, accompanied by a cup of sweet coffee. I, although I guess I said I already had two cups, so I had two caffeinated cups. I could always make a decaf. Yeah. How should I summarize this? If I mention the clock tower incident, I'm going to have to bring up the girls breaking curfew. That would betray the dorm manager and ruin the image of the two students. I guess I should just stick to mentioning the pool ghost. Who is that? Black telephone rings loudly. Who's calling me this late? Hello? Ah, Kinokawa here. Hello. Oh, I wasn't expecting you to call this soon. Before we parted ways, I gave them the number to Kujo Mansion, just in case. Dude, have you learned nothing? Calling is pointless. Like, they're just gonna... The departed is just gonna be, like, pretend to be the students in trouble or something. I just didn't imagine that she'd be using the number so soon. Why'd you call? I just wanted to hear your voice. <laughs> your calm voice makes me feel relaxed. Don't you get that a lot? What are you going on about? Anyway, what do you want to talk about? I have a question for you. Let's say... What if I is the departed? Can you beat her? Why are you asking something like that? Well, the departed's hiding in our school and we have no idea who it is. I just don't know what I'd do if he may turn out to be the departed. Just thinking about it makes me feel depressed, hence, I, hence why I wanted to talk to you. Could you attack Ai if she's the departed? Mm. No comment. I, I doubt she is the departed. I guess my question was way too childish, huh? Time to take a bath. Good night. God, that really is like the neighbor's kid calling you. What are you doing right now? <laughs> I gotta show you what I do. <laughs> I hang up the phone. I need to wash off my sweat and get some shut eye. You just had a cup of coffee. I... That baffles me. There are people out there who drink a cup of coffee before bed. I... There's no way. When I close my eyes, the smile of the two girls I saved tonight runs through my mind. The tension melts away. For the first time in days, I experience that pleasant bliss of floating to dreamland, unburdened by the past few days' events. However, I notice tranquility is fleeting at best. Once a new notice arrives, I'll have to face the specter again. <gasps> wow, that was such a quick chapter. I thought it was going to be an hour and a half, so I knew it was going to be short, but I didn't think it was going to be this short. Normally, I would go longer, but I do like my chapter and episode deal. Ten hours, wow. A few days have passed since the incident. We have lots to think about though. But yeah, I I don't mind a little bit of a shorter episode because my, my left eye has been getting worse with eye strain. So not many people know this, but I am slightly, ever so slightly cross-eyed. And I've been gaming so much lately and reading a lot. Uh, I think both of them are contributing to eye strain just on this side of my eye. On this left eye. So I got eye drops yesterday and they actually have been helping a lot. All my veins on this side of my eye were popped from eye strain and they're, they look much better today. So I'm on the right track, but I definitely need to like ease up on the recordings a little bit. So for today, I'm gonna say yes, only one hour done and I'll be back soon. Chapter five. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching.